you just got to dive in. Can't feel out the water. You just got to dive right in, right? Of course. Right. I can't you just stand there and you're like, what am I doing? Yeah, I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. What's up, guys? Hey, how are you? Sorry, I'm looking at myself here. I'm trying to make sure I'm in the right frame and you can't see what's on my table because we haven't cleaned it. I'm going to go like this. Got to clean up some stuff in the house. Make a video today. I'm sorry, I've been slacking lately. I know. I've been slacking. I've just been busy. Not only am I busy, but you guys got to keep in mind that ah, it sucks sometimes. Like, you got to... Life happens, you know what I mean? Life is not always... Sprinkles and sparkles and fairy tales and all that other shit. You know what I mean? Like, things go on in people's lives. People get stressed out. People get depressed for things and are going through things or whatever the case may be. I don't always feel like talking to my camera, okay? Sometimes I just like to live my life. So, it's hard. You gotta be, to do these videos, you gotta think about it. Not only, I get... I'm letting you into my life, you know what I mean? Like, you're knowing personal things about me, what my house looks like. It's very, it's a very personal thing. Sometimes it's like you gotta get into the groove and you gotta get in this, like, character to film, you know what I mean? But, whatever. Enough of this stupid stuff. Hi. What's up, guys? How are you? I hope everybody else has been great. Today, my buddy Matt's here helping out with the filming. Because Jake, I guess, partied in Miami all weekend and he's been sick for like a week. How he's got like herpagonocephalase or something. Who knows? He's bedridden. I need to find a new camera guy. And then Alex. Alex is working his job over at the jungle and he doesn't have set days off. So, yeah, I don't know. I just got to get everybody on the routine again and do this. Okay? Anyways, enough of my jibber jabber. Today, we are going to set up a little pen for these Aldabra tortoises, all right? Ronnie, get in the freaking house. Okay, so this is my Aldabra tortoise pen. I made a video on uh, how to make this. So next week, actually no, this week, I'm sorry, in the next couple days, where is my freaking weather channel? Yeah, it's getting in the 50s all week long. It's going to be 50 or below. I'll show you, but you probably can't really see with that lens. Yeah, in the 50s, okay? So that is no bueno for if you're keeping reptiles outside or turtles, whatever the case is. If you're keeping animals outside and it gets cold at night, you need to bring them in. Put them on heat. Make sure they're nice and cozy. Because some of these, especially reptiles, they cannot take cold temperatures. Our iguanas down here, look at that huge one right over there. Our iguanas though down here, when it does get cold, all the wild iguanas here, obviously they're invasive, they're not supposed to be here. But when it gets in like the 40s and 30s, we have these crazy cold fronts come through, it kills all of them. They literally, there's all over the news, there'll be things, iguanas falling out of trees, this, that, the other thing. Literally, they freeze, fall out of the trees, it kills a lot of them. So, if you don't bring your animals inside, you could kill them too. So today, I got a little pen for these guys. Now even when it's getting, even when it's getting a little chillier, I have, you can see, you can see I have heat lights on these, on their cages. This infrared light stays on 24 seven. And then the Black Dragon has a ceramic bulb. It's 250 watt ceramic bulb. So it keeps a nice basking spot. And I put it on his little, his little tunnel thing when he, uh, when he sleeps at night. So he stays nice and warm. But yeah, so these are my little Aldabras. They're getting bigger from the last time you guys saw them. They're a little, I mean, I see, I feel like they're a little bit bigger. This is Chevy and this is Harriet. They're pretty cool. I didn't make a video on getting the second one because I mean, I didn't feel like there was a real point in making a second video about the second one. 
I just wanted to get him a friend. I told you guys that in one of the videos before. So this is his friend, Chevy Harriet. Um, the reason why I named him Harriet, Charles Darwin actually, when these turtles were, when these tortoises were discovered, Charles Darwin took a baby Aldabra from the island. He named it Harriet, and then eventually that tortoise got turned over to the Australian Zoo, where it was Steve Irwin's tortoise for a while. And Steve Irwin had that tortoise till he was probably like 180 years old, and then the tortoise died. And then Steve Irwin died. But anyways, you get the point. Chevy, Harriet, they're really cool. Now these are babies, okay? These guys are literally maybe six months old, okay? They're going to get huge. Aldabra tortoises live for 200 years. Uh, males get 500 pounds. Females get 300 pounds. Massive tortoises. World's second largest tortoise. Galapagos tortoises are the largest, but they pretty much, I mean, I feel like, I've seen adults of both, of both species and I feel like they get pretty much the same size. I've seen Aldabra tortoises dwarfing Galapagos and, and vice versa. Their necks aren't too long right now, but as they grow, they're gonna get longer. These guys have really long necks when they get to adulthood, so that way they can grab fruit hanging from trees and stuff like that. Pretty cool. So let's go set up this little pen, okay? We'll leave these guys out here, go set something inside, and then we'll come back out. Ronnie, what the heck are you doing, bro? You can't be in here. Little baby. Oh, the lighting's kind of terrible. Gotta get out of here. Lighting's terrible? Alright, so. Look. It's a secret. So check this out. How clever was this? I went online, I was like, I was trying to find those plastic, you know those little plastic kiddie pools? But it's winter time. Went, it's winter time in Florida. It's 80 degrees outside. It's winter time here. So I couldn't find those little kiddie pools anywhere. And Amazon doesn't sell the plastic ones. So I went on Amazon and I was like, oh, what else could I use to put inside the snake room for the tortoises to keep to make a little warm setup for them? Awesome. This is going to be perfect. Boom. We got a turtle sandbox. Watch out, Ronnie. Boom. Check this thing out. It's perfect. It's just the right size. I gotta keep it in the middle of the room. Put some mulch in there. Bada boom. Call it a day. Boom. Just like that. This knife is sharp as shit. That should be enough. I'm not going to go too crazy because I don't want him to be able to crawl out of this thing. Woo, boy. Dude, he... The cool thing about these guys is the cage maintenance is pretty easy because they always poop in their water. You guys can't smell that right now, but it is terrible. It does not smell good. It's a bunch of chick poop. Bunch of chick poop soup. Real gross. But this guy, he's slowly getting better. He's not as skittish as he was. Um, he's come after me aggressive a few times. Like literally run after me. Trying to bite me. But for the most part, he's not that bad. Every day, I just come out here, I open up his cage, try not to get too close, you're gonna spook him. You're gonna spook him. I'm very slow with him. I don't really try to touch him or anything. I just kinda sit here, I put my hand out like this, and I just let him I just let him smell me out and do his thing. You 
you know. Definitely don't want to get bit by this guy. <laughs> it's it's sketchy. Like you never know what he's gonna do. Whether he's just gonna come up to your hand and smell it, or he's gonna come up to your hand, and he's gonna just grab it. You know? Because the other day I was letting Latifa do that inside. I wish I got it on video for you guys. But I was sitting there by Latifah's cage and I was letting her smell my hand and I guess it smelled like chicken or fuzzies or something and she just latched onto my finger and it, it sucked. Especially at this age, he's a little older, so he's a little more timid, you know? It takes, it's going to take a lot to get this guy to trust me. I don't want to push him because then he's just going to be scared of me all the time. Then again, I don't want to get bit by him either because that is not a fun bite. They have razor sharp teeth. That would just lace you up. Even Latifa, she got my, she got my index finger and just, dude, I was bleeding like crazy. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how I designed this. Really easy to change the water out on this cage. Like I said, they always poop in their water. They poop like every other day, and I feed him. He probably eats like four or five chicks at a time. So when he does take a dump, it's pretty crazy. It's feathers and just. It's disgusting. So, how I do it, everything's in the water. It's all gross, poop stew, super nasty. Down here, underneath the cage, I got this valve right here. So all I gotta do to put new water in it, I just undo this valve, like that. Now the water's gonna start draining out. So now I'm just gonna go grab my hose, and I'm gonna hose out all the crap and just let it go through that drain until all the water is nice and clear, fill it back up. So let me go grab the hose. So I'm just rinsing this crap out until it gets nice clear water again. Shooting all that stuff down that drain. Gross. I feel like if I had a filter hooked up to it, it would just suck all the poop into the filter and then would just be recycling poop water throughout the whole thing and I'm not really about that. I'd rather just keep it fresh. Just give it fresh water every time. Look, he's going in the water. What, 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 did you go in the water to freak out, bro? Why'd you do that? What? It smells worse now that you stirred it all up. Yes, yeah, disgusting. <laughs> Look, there's little, look at these little chick feet. Look, there's, was... there's feet. Look at this. See that? This comes straight out of his poop. It's gross. Look, little chick feet everywhere. Little chick massacre up in there. Did yeah, I just get all this digested? crap out. Huh? It's digested. It's just, it like passes through. That's what I'm saying, like it doesn't break down, it just comes. Yeah, it's like when you eat corn, you know? It's like a surprise a few days later. It's like, I don't remember eating corn. I don't remember eating chicken. It just comes right out. All right, so now I got all that crap out. For the most part, water's getting pretty clear. I'm keeping this drain unclogged, so I'm just gonna hit this drain closed and fill it back up. Just like that. All right, so that is that. All right, so boom, perfect, just like this. This is the perfect little size for them. And now, obviously, this is not permanent. Obviously, they're not staying in here forever. You always just need to make sure that you have a plan for your animals. It's very important. Especially with, with anything, with the weather down here, with hurricanes down here, there's a few different things that you need to prep for. Prepping is huge for your animals. You need to make sure when things happen, like it getting 50 degrees tomorrow night or even tonight, I'm ready to bring my animals inside and make sure that they stay warm. The monitor outside, what I'm gonna be doing for him I'm actually gonna be keeping him outside. A lot of people that have outdoor enclosures, like Camp Kennan, okay? Kennan and Tom Crutchfield 
they keep a lot of animals outside a lot okay so obviously you can't just take in say you have 100 200 tortoises outside or you have iguanas or whatever the case is okay it gets too cold for them you can't just bring all those animals inside you have to have their cages set up to accommodate them when it does get cold so with that said the way that you do it is on those outdoor enclosures you pretty much build these hide boxes and a lot of camp Kennan's cages or enclosures they have these they're like these little wooden houses or uh, Cannon, Cannon actually has them made out of concrete at his house. So where all the tortoises go inside these little huts and there's heating elements inside the huts and they're locked inside the hut until it's warm out again and then they're released. Same thing with the big lizards. I don't want to have to take that lizard in, in and out of its cage all the time when it gets cold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a heat pad underneath so that way when it's in its hide box at night he stays in there it's it stays the perfect temperature it'll be like 90 to 100 degrees inside of there which is perfect for them you want to make sure these guys don't get cold okay because then when you got sick animals that's not fun when these guys are cold you got to keep in mind when you're cold they're cold you know especially reptiles but these guys will be fine I don't have to put them in here right now I just wanted to see like size comparison and I'm still gonna set it up a little bit different I'm gonna put a heat light on here in the UV light because obviously they're inside now so I want to make sure they're still getting UV rays so I'm gonna set up a UV bulb right here and that's pretty much it I'm gonna throw the heat elements on that on that water monitors cage out there and that's that I don't keep too many things outside. Everything for the most part that I have is indoors. Just these little guys and that bigger water monitor are the only things that are kept outside. So that's it. I hope you guys learned something. Anybody down here keeping animals outside? It's about to get cold. Make sure, make sure they're taken care of. Don't let your don't let all of your animals get cold. Alright? So, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I'm going to try to pump some videos out this week. I got some time off. I was supposed to go to Mexico. That whole ordeal got canceled. I guess the guy throwing the Mexico show had to cancel on everybody last minute, which is crazy because he's got world famous tattooers from all over the world doing it. Not only that, but also their clients because who in Mexico is going to get tattooed? Nobody. Everybody has to bring their own clients. So we just, we really got screwed on that. So, but now I'm not going to Mexico. I'll be doing a, uh, I'm still tattooing my buddy Travis. I'm doing a three day in a row tattoo on him. Literally, I'm tattooing him three days in a row. We're trying to finish up his entire leg. So I'm gonna make a video of that this weekend. That should be pretty cool. Um, I gotta bring Kayla her fish tank. She got a new studio and a new apartment. So I gotta do that. Um, yeah, stay tuned. Mikey, the real Tarzan, he wants to get tattooed on the back of his head. I'll probably make a video about that. We got some good stuff coming out soon. So, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. You guys rock.